And Julie is my um, person who's looking in the waiting room. Are we good to go? I can't hear the audio. I, Barb, I think we are good to go. Oh, somebody um, said they couldn't hear audio. I hit that, but maybe they're not. Talk well, I see them talking. I can hear someone talking in the background. I think it's Jeannie who said that she can't hear. And she's muted now. I muted it. And I am the Employment and Community Life Engagement Manager with the Division of Developmental Disabilities. And I would like to welcome all of you to the Career Exploration Reset presentation. I would like to quickly address a couple of reminders. If you are participating via Zoom, please mute your mic. And if you have called in, please mute your phone line. If you want to ask a question or provide a comment, you will need to unmute your line at that time. You can also type into the chat box at any time during the presentation. Julie Hand is assisting in monitoring the chat box. There will be opportunities for questions during specific times in the presentation. So I ask that you please hold your questions until that time or put them in the chat box. Also, if you have individual specific scenario questions, please reach out to me at another time and we can talk through those specifics. It is our intent that if technology goes as planned, which maybe hasn't gone so well so far today, that this training is being recorded and we will make available on our website for future reference. I just want to do a quick sound check. Did everybody hear that? Yes. OK, thank you. Yes. So I hope you haven't been feeling the urge to panic since receiving my letter on January 13th. I have to admit, my heart rate might have increased just a little bit as well when I reflected on our last announced change to career exploration and all that that entailed. But my goal today is to hopefully eliminate the panic, stay calm. And my slides aren't moving forward uh, as I'm doing this. Let's try this again. I think I needed that stay calm, stay calm panic to come up again. I got it. It's clicking. I so apologize. Today, we will be covering the content of the letter you received in regards to the career exploration reset, what this means for you as far as next steps and lessons I learned from the first submission of the career exploration criteria and the DHS DD 840 request for provision of career exploration service form. I hope the information shared will be helpful as you move forward with the reset. Before we get started with the presentation, I want to make sure that everyone understands this presentation is very specific to the career exploration reset and ongoing provision of career exploration services. 
It is not intended to be a full beginning to end overview of the person-centered discovery and planning process to develop an ISP and ISP programs that include career exploration. Instead, this presentation is focusing on documentation needed to properly move forward with the reset and continued provision of career exploration services. In March of 2020, the Division of Developmental Disabilities recognized the need to temporarily reduce and or eliminate policies to ensure resources were focused on preventing the spread of COVID-19. As a result, the division paused the 18 month time limit until further notice for all participants who had an approved DHS DD840 request for the provision of career exploration services. As the pandemic con continued beyond what we had originally hoped, it became evident that in order for participants to receive the full benefit of career exploration, the division needed to submit a waiver amendment to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. You probably are used to hearing it called CMS to change the effective start date for the career exploration 18 month time limit. CMS approved the effective start date to June 1, 2021. It was previously June 1 of 2020. So what does that mean? Effective June 1 of 2021, any participant receiving career expiration will have available to them an 18 month reset with up to two three month extension. So even though the time limit that is available is up to 18 months, the team determines the amount of time to request based on skills and abilities of the participant. The team may determine that a participant only needs to receive six months of service or 12 months or just one month. Between now and June 1 of 2021, the participants team will need to determine if career expiration is still the best option for the participant. If no, a significant change request would need to be submitted to close the service. The team would identify ways to assist the participant in gaining opportunities for meaningful life experience. Also a reminder that if a no, a reduction of service notice would need to be provided at least 10 days before the service is ended. If yes, the team will review the current goal or goals and action steps specific to career exploration to ensure that the plan is still accurate and will support progress toward the outcome of integrated community employment. An ISP revision will be completed to address all changes. Team meeting minutes can be attached to the ISP to reflect the team decisions, or it can be added in the discussion section of the ISP. This team discussion must be documented. ISP programs should also be reviewed and amended based on the team discussion. No new documentation or DHS DD840 form will need to be submitted to continue the provision of career expiration services. Instead, the review of all necessary criteria will become a part of the monthly smart file review process. If career expiration services were ended due to COVID, 
and the person services will resume prior to June 2021, the existing DHS DD-840 form remains in effect, so you do not need to submit another one. The team will meet and address all criteria as was previously discussed in an earlier slide to look at their progress to date, do all of the items still meet where their current needs are and make revisions as appropriate. And an SCR to add the service will need to be submitted. As you begin meeting to discuss this reset, I want you to remember the criteria for the provision of career exploration. The participant receiving career exploration and their team will identify and document existing work readiness skills, meet to determine if career exploration continues to be the best service option for this participant, develop an outcome for competitive integrated employment in the ISP, develop goals and supports related to employment in the ISP, identify the time required to successfully end career expiration and transition the participant toward competitive employment and or integrated community activities and develop activities to support each employment goal. Even though I am not going to be reviewing each of these and ensuring all criteria is still in place prior to June 1, this criteria will be reviewed when a participant receiving career expiration services is chosen for SMART file review. The SMART system will be updated to include this element and causal factors that will be reviewed. Before we move on to the next section of the presentation, I will open it up for any questions you might have so far based on information that I have shared. Have I wowed you all and you have no questions or are you shy and nobody wants to go first? Julie, do we have any in the comment box? No, I don't. I don't see any. Uh, let me scroll down a second. Nope, I don't see any in the chat box at this time, but I'm, I'm watching. I'll give it a little bit while I um, get prepared to do the next section. And if we don't have any, that's great. Or if you think of some as we move on, put it in the chat box and maybe we'll have time at the end. Um, there's a question, will this presentation be available on the portal? Um, the answer is yes. Um, it usually takes us a couple days to get the video trimmed and um, uploaded and saved to the website. But yes, we will put this out there. And hopefully all of you received a copy of the actual PowerPoint presentation as well. I emailed it out yesterday. If you weren't on that, if you signed up after and weren't on that email list, um, send me an email and I'll make sure to get that sent out to you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move us forward. Like I said, if you think of something, please feel free to put it in the chat box. I'm now going to share Barb's top 10 list of lessons learned from the January 2020 DHS DD840 request for provision of career exploration services process. 
Sorry, they aren't going to be David Letterman funny. Just a few reminders that I hope make your reset for participants go a little smoother. Lesson learned number one. What is career exploration? I want to ensure that we keep in mind the intent of this service. Career exploration focuses on the development of competitive worker traits using trial work as the primary training method and teaches the understanding of the expectations of a competitive work environment, workplace problem solving skills and strategies and general workplace safety and mobility training. Note that I put in bold training and teaches. Trial work without training and teaching to develop work readiness skills will not be sufficient to meet the criteria for the provision of this service. For example, stating that many will complete contract work three of five days does not address what teaching and learning will occur. You need to identify what work readiness skills will be worked on and developed while doing that trial work experience. Otherwise, you are not addressing why she needs to be in this service versus working in an integrated competitive job in the community. Lesson learned number two, identify and document existing work readiness skills. Use your assessment to identify areas of strength and areas in need of improvement. Look at work readiness skills, not job specific readiness skills. An assessment that only looks at type of work interested in and if they are able to do tasks within a specific job is not providing you with information on work readiness skills. Instead, you need an assessment that identifies skills you need for any job, like ability to stay on task, arrives to work on time, restocks materials as needed, has appropriate conversations with others while at work, following one or two step tasks. These are all just a few examples of skills that you need no matter what type of job you want. Lesson learned number three, document team discussion. I can't emphasize enough the importance of documenting that the team met and discussed career exploration. This is how you as a team review and determine strengths and areas needing improvement in order for the participant to be successful in transitioning to a competitive integrated job. This can be noted within special team meeting minutes or the discussion section of the ISP. Lesson learned number four, team discussion includes team decision that career exploration is the best option for the participant and the length of time in career exploration. The length of time, this is based on the person's abilities and should not be written as a year because the ISP is only good for a year or automatically for 18 months because that is how long you have to show progress toward goal and move into employment or document need for a three month extension. This time limit should be based on the areas that will be worked on and the amount of instruction and assistance needed to attain the work readiness skills identified. This should be very participant specific, not that we have 18 months, so let's use them all. Lesson learned number five, determine best learning environment. The team needs to review work readiness skills that will be taught during career exploration and what is the best way and setting in which to develop those skills. Look into the community for learning opportunities. 
career exploration can be furnished in a variety of locations in the community and consideration should be given to opportunities for learning outside of the agency walls sheltered workshop environment. Consider options for internships, apprenticeships, self-employment. Participants funded through career exploration may serve as a temporary member of a designated group in the absence of a regularly, regularly scheduled member to use trial work to identify and develop skills, as well as explore different kinds of work that prepare them for integrated competitive jobs. Lesson learned number six, amount of service time needed for success. Consider if the amount of time in career exploration in a given week will support goal attainment. If the team has identified multiple work readiness skills in need of improvement and the person is in career exploration for only one hour a week, is that sufficient for goal attainment of community integrated employment in the time frame identified? document paid and unpaid hours per week in service support section of the ISP. Also include all hours of career expiration paid and unpaid. An SCR was submitted after the initial DHS DD840 form was approved. If changes have been made or will be made based on your team meeting, an SCR should be submitted to reflect those changes. Unpaid activities could include career exploration classes, general work for workplace safety and mobility training, workplace problem solving, job shadowing, and volunteering. Lesson learned number seven, ISP programs and ISP activities. Will activities identified assist the individual in developing their work readiness skills? Will ISP programs provide the data necessary for the team to determine and measure progress? Make sure that your ISP programs support the development of the work readiness skills versus documenting job duties that will be completed. For example, mop floors, wash dishes, complete X number of units. If that is what they will be doing while working on work readiness skills, it should state the work readiness skill, not the job duty. So if one of the areas you're wanting to work on is working independently to complete work tasks, one of the task descriptions might be, at the start of her work time, did Minnie get all supplies necessary to mop floors? And you would collect data as to whether she did and with or without prompts. As data is reviewed, possibly the team would identify that she continues to need prompts and the team determines that they might develop a reminder list, either paper or on a cell phone that she will use to help her remember her supplies that she needs at the beginning of each day. Data being collected is assisting in determining if progress toward goal attainment is occurring, and you have made steps to assist her along the way by reviewing that data. Lesson learned number eight, the DHS DD840 form must be submitted for an initial request. I am currently accepting the DHS DD840 forms at this time. I will review all criteria and if approved, the participant can begin receiving career expiration as a service effective the approval date. If this request is submitted before June 1 of 2021, the time limit count of days will not start that effective date, but will start with our restart time of June 1, 2021. The DD, DHS DD840 form 
must be submitted if service closed before the end of the 18 month time limit and participant is requesting to re-enter the service. Participant starts career expiration and service ends after six months because person is now in a competitive integrated job. After two months of working, the person loses their job and the team convenes and determines that the participant would benefit from initial additional, excuse me, work readiness skill development. A new DHS DD840 request and all criteria must be submitted and approval received prior to the start of that service. In addition, the time clock will start at six months. Six months is how long the person had been in career expiration at time of becoming employed. Time limit is cumulative, doesn't start over with a new DD840 request. The form must be submitted for three month extension requests also. A total of two three month extensions can be submitted for approval. As the end of the 18 months time limit nears and the participant does not yet have an integrated community job, the team meets and determines if the individual still wants to have an integrated community job and if yes, documents what progress has been made toward this outcome and what steps will be implemented in the next three months to continue progress. A new DHS DD840 form will need to be submitted requesting the three month extension. And this request will need prior approval for the individual to remain in career expiration. An additional three month extension can be submitted for a total of six months of extension. That is why the collection of data to reflect progress is so critical. This is needed to request extensions. These extensions are only to be submitted as the person nears the end of their 18 month time limit. An extension is not submitted for approval if the original DHS DD840 request stated that the team felt the participant only needed six months and those six months have ended, the team would need to reconvene to address progress to date and review and revise the ISP and ISP programs as appropriate, but a request for a three month extension should not be submitted. Due to the reset, the soonest I should see a three month extension request would be in early November of 2022, requesting an extension to start December 1 of 2022. Lesson learned number nine, what if? What if the participant accepts a job and it doesn't work out? The time limit clock stops when career expiration ends. For example, a participant has been receiving career expiration for 10 months and obtains a job. Unfortunately, this job doesn't work out. The team meets and determines that the participant would benefit from career expiration as a service. The participant could re-enter career expiration with 10 months used and eight months remaining. The team should track the number of days so that you know how much time the person still has available. In addition, the division will also be tracking via our fiscal data system. What if the participant is funded by Community Training Service or CTS? The same process for reset as well as initial and three month extensions is required even if the source of funding is CTS. And my final lesson learned number 10, use resources. Remember that the Division of Developmental Disabilities has resources available on our website. 
Here, of the, here are a few of the resources available. Charting a person-centered path to employment. This guide is intended to promote meaningful conversations about the person's vision of what a good life looks like and how work may or may not fit into that vision. Choices Daily Life and Employment Toolkit addresses such things as a more in-depth overview of individual supported employment, including what activities are a part of the four phases within individual supported employment, group supported employment, and career exploration, including activities for which a participant would not earn a wage and activities for which a participant would earn a wage. Choices, daily life and employment, family and self-advocate frequently asked questions. Choices, daily life and employment provider frequently asked questions. This was revised in May of 2020. A recording of the career exploration technical assistance webinar provided on September 26th of 2019 that goes more in depth on the entire process and development and documenting of the employment outcome, action steps, and activities within Thera. And of course, please don't hesitate to call me with questions specific to career exploration and other employment services, or drop me an email. I hope after this presentation, your panic over this reset has subsided and you are feeling like Rocky, accepting the challenge. Are there any questions that I could field at this time? So Barb, we had um, a question in the chat about whether the process was dictated by um, CMS or developed by South Dakota. And I did respond in the chat that um, CMS dictates that there must be a time limit and um, this essentially, what Barb has outlined today, uh, the requirements are defined by what we have submitted in our choices waiver, which is approved by CMS. Um, but the process and the actual time limit were established by DBD. Thank you, Julie. I threw a lot of information out there. And so I appreciate that some of this might not click and still, until you start talking through participants that you are currently providing career exploration as a service for, and then you're gonna have a ton of questions. And so, like I said, utilize those resources, utilize me as a resource, reach out, even if it's just, are we thinking the right thought here? You bet, um, please call. And as you know, those of you that have done this in the past, you might end up being on the phone with me longer than you had originally thought, because I like to walk through all the possible pieces of it, but that's how you and I both learn together. So I look forward to those calls. If we don't have any questions, I'm happy to say you've earned back some time today and, uh, Maybe it's just go outside for a brisk breath of fresh air. If no questions, I'm going to close it for today. And I thank you so much for taking the time to participate. And I hope this helps as you move forward. Thank you. Barb, Barb we have just had oh. um, a question come into the chat box. The question is, if a person is employed after 24 months 
of Career Exploration Services, and due to changes caused by health, they need to re-enter career exploration. Is there a mechanism to restart the service? So they've already exhausted those 24 yes. months is how I'm reading it. Um, and due to some health issues, they have to re-enter the service. Right. There is no formal process that we have established other than to say that we would review each of those scenarios on a case by case individual basis, because our process currently is a total of 24 months. We do acknowledge that there are situations that might arise that require further thought and um, looking at how can we best meet their needs. And so that will be on a case by case basis review. You are welcome. That says thank you. Okay. Good question. Okay. okay, if I say, are we going to sign off now? Will I get another one in the chat box? You know, I'm an educator by trade. I can let there be silence for a few <laughs> minutes here and it won't phase me a bit, so. I'm gonna go ahead and end it again. I thank you and I thank Julie for um, taking care of the chat box. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Thanks all.